Friday, November 19th. I um, I just finished participating in the Lunada Virtual Liter Literary Lounge um, with Galeria de la Raza. And um, it's really cool. <laughs> I mean, I was so nervous. Um, I, I, a lot more than what I anticipated. Um, but it was really great. It, it's so inspirational to hear the other artists and, and poets and, and just the music and, and the mixes and, and just the words just really, um, wow, wow. I mean, I'm blown away. And even more so that there were a lot of, um, uh, there was just a lot of representation from, it, it just, it, in terms of just the connections, right? In terms of, of the stories, in terms of just um, what resonated. And, and it's like this element of, of um, seeing your reflection in them, right? And, and and then also them seeing a reflection of themselves in you. You know, I, I had a lot of, so I guess it's set up to where it's a different login space. So I'm with all of the performers um, in a separate lounge. Um, and, and so uh, we had our own chat availability to, to each other. And I was the first one to go. So I, I saw that they were very supportive and, and I wanted to make sure I, I you know, I provided that back and, and stayed logged on as best as I could because my internet was a little sketchy. Um, and um, I mean, gosh, what an honor. <laughs> what an honor. I mean, they were, they were all it. They were all it. it just, yeah, wow, wow. <laughs> like my mom says, no pues wow. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was incredible a great experience um yeah so i i did it yay <laughs> yay to me um and you know i think i mentioned that tomorrow well that had i aligned it every day the poem that um i actually perform or spoke read um, the poem that I read is the poem that I initially first wrote, but it was just an edited version of it. I, I took out some parts and, and made some changes. Um, and so I'll include the link below, um, if you missed it, if you're interested in just checking out Galeria de la Raza. I mean, it was really great, great opportunity to connect. Um, and, and... And I think I, I might have mentioned it. I don't know if I, I don't think I mentioned it in terms of just, because I, I let my family know. Um, you know, I, I spread the word, right? I'm just letting them know like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Come and support, come join, check it out, you know, watch. And and, and my brother, uh, my brother responded back. And, and then he said, um, is that how you feel? is what he said. He said, you did a good job. He's like, but is that how you feel? Um, and I was surprised really with his, res with his question. Cause you know, my brother isn't one to ask about feelings. And, and so he said, definitely saw our childhood in there. And then he put, sounds like you have no place. Hope you find your place. Is that how you feel? So I said, not anymore. I have found my place. And then he said, Frisco, he calls the city of Frisco, or a gypsy poet is what he put. Um, and then he put, sometimes you have to lose yourself to find yourself. And so I didn't go into depth in terms of explaining to him how I feel now. Um, but I wrote it in, in that, in the description box for that video um, that came out. Or that will come out tomorrow morning. Um, reaching out from the poet within chapter 29, episode 8. Um, and I wrote, and this was in response to the um, the um, the poetry reading that I went in Oakland. So it wasn't from 
this one. This was the other one. But I realized being there that I was being triggered by the words of others in regards to my own identity because there was an element of feeling like an outsider um, because I couldn't completely relate to the type of struggles that were being described. But at the same time, I was able to feel them and, and still be deeply moved by how they saw themselves and the world around them. But I didn't realize until that moment that I recorded that video three months ago, really, to the date, um, of how much I'm still struggling, or at that point in time, um, with identifying myself as a woman of color after being so acculturated and, and kind of being swung back and forth um, between countries and labels at the same time. Um, I mean, and, and then I kind of make a note, you know, I was called wet up growing up and, and then teased because I was American. And then when I got into high school, we moved to a more affluent community where, where I became, I went from the majority to the minority in, in, in our cities. And, and, and then I was told that I looked Lebanese to this day, people still will ask me where I'm from and are shocked when I tell them where I'm from and where my parents are from. And then they say, you look Lebanese, you look Middle Eastern. Um, and, and, and then I've been complimented on my Spanish also in terms of just, um, you know, that I don't have an American accent that, you know, they're shocked that I'm from here. And, and then my age is another thing. Um, so there was always this element of finding it hard to fit in um, and then at the same time, even though it was difficult for me to connect, for whatever reason, I was able to help other people connect with me. Um, and, and this realization that I'm okay with where I'm at now. It, it's not a physical location in terms of where my place is anymore. Um, there's this element of letting that go, of, of accepting that I'm, I'm, I'm from those places, but also not. And, and this ability to let go of that attachment is so liberating because now I'm not having to get caught up in this tug of war almost of, of what I need to defend. Um, and, and instead there's this openness of being able to embrace everything and everyone it's just it's a really uh it's it's a humbling and and it's a very humbling and, and loving experience really um not to say that i don't get triggered because i still do but really not to the same degree. And, and, and I can see past it. Like I can see past that, that emotional response. And it's almost, you know what it is? It's almost as if I'm, I'm shifting as I'm, as I was listening to their words and the music, it almost felt like I was shifting through their words in search of what I was able to connect with. So, so there's this element of, of hearing someone speak their truth and not becoming emotionally reactive to where I need to defend myself, but instead it's being able to filter through their words to find where I can connect, which is, it's just an, it's, I don't know if that's a skill. <laughs> I don't know if that's a skill, but that's what I found myself doing. So it was almost this element of, even though there were parts of it that I, I, I honestly, I can't even, I can't even remember feeling like I didn't connect. Even though I know if I were to go back and listen, different upbringing, I mean, there's definitely a lot of differences, but I wasn't focused on that in their words. It, I was really filtering through and, and, finding what I was able to connect with.
Um, and, and I think that made the experience that much more meaningful, that much more um, uh, wonderful in the element of, of being one in that community for that hour and a half, if that makes sense. And so then I wonder, you know, it just so happens to be a day where I, I guess there was a verdict. I mentioned I don't watch the news. But it's not that I don't hear of it. Like I hear of things and, and you know, I mentioned it before that when you focus on certain things, you attract more of that, you, you see it more. So if you focus on the despair, guess what? You're gonna filter through what's going on around you and only see despair. And, and, and so I actually had this conversation with you know, some of my clients today in terms of shifting their energy, shifting their focus on what they are wanting to attract, on what they are wanting to see within themselves, really, because it's it's these words that, that these unhelpful thought processes, right, that, that are being um, highlighted when they're trying to do something, when they're trying to get back on track, when they're trying to um, work on trust issues, whatever it may be. There's this automatic thought process that occurs that tends to be very negative, very, um, it just, it's off, emotionally off for, for them. And, and that's where all of those emotions kind of come into play, right? So I was, I was talking to them about how important it is, you know, to, to do that self-reflection and ask themselves, like, where, where are these thoughts coming from? And, and is is it uh, in alignment with how they, they want to feel emotionally and to use their emotions as a guidance, an internal compass to guide them in where they need to shift their attention to. So instead of focusing on the negative, right? Focus on the positive and what you do want to see. And I mentioned it with another client uh, last week or a week ago. I said, you know, I, I told her, don't think of a pink elephant. And then she just, she starts laughing. I'm like, why are you laughing? I told you not to think of a pink elephant. She's like, I'm thinking of a pink elephant. I'm like, exactly. Because I'm telling you to not do it. Yet, that's how our, our brain processes information, right? You, you see what you don't want to see. And so as, as quickly as that occurred, now imagine, right? And, and how quickly that image was brought up to her attention. I said, now imagine everything else around us right? How quick we are to, to say, I, I don't want to see racism. But guess what? That's all you see. And and this is that same conversation that, you know, I, I explained to a lot of the parents when I used to do um, parenting, like coaching um, through a specific program, when I was working with them on how to provide directives for their kids. And then I would use that as an example, you know, if you tell your kids, you know, don't think of a pink elephant, or I'm telling you, right, that example, and then they do it, and I'm like, but I told you not to do it. It's that same concept of telling your kids, don't hit each other, right? Instead of telling them, don't hit each other, tell them what you want to see. Keep your hands to yourself. Use gentle touches, right? Because now you're painting that picture with those words. You're painting that picture in your mind. And guess what? You're helping them paint that same picture. Yeah. Sorry, that was my little rant. <laughs> Did not plan to, to talk about that, but I guess that's what came out. So, so that's where I'm at in terms of finding my place. And this experience here in the city, in the Mission District, in this literary lounge for the last hour and a half, in this moment, I am in my place. I'm exactly where I need to be. And that feels good. So that was that was a great experience. And so thank you, Galeria de la Raza. Thank you um, to Yossi and um, La Fem Papi and everybody who participate, Yvette, um, Henry behind the scenes for helping with um, all the audio and, and um, just for putting this together and, and for for um, giving people a, a platform to speak and share their truth. Um, so thank you. Hi, 
my name is Yubi, and in case you haven't figured it out, this footage is capturing my experience as I learn to navigate my personal spiritual awakening. Um, I am learning that this experience is unique to each one of us. Um, in whatever way we believe we are embracing living our truth, this just happens to be my journey. Um, and despite me having a graduate degree and a license in clinical social work, this by no means is intended to replace any type of mental health advice. This is just me on a personal level, uh, documenting my experience, shedding light on the truth that I am learning and discovering for myself, um, and really inviting you along for the ride. Um, if by some <laughs> magical chance you find this content to be helpful in any way, shape, or form, please click the like button, you know, share the message, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have an Instagram account, a personal one, and one specifically for this channel that you're more than welcome to check out. Um, I'm an open book. Um, I have also created t-shirt um, designs. I'm wearing my favorite one right now, which is the North Node. Um, uh, design, um, but I have that and other things uh, that you can look at um, inspired by this process and journey um, and I have the link in the description box as well as in the about section of my YouTube um, channel. So you're more than welcome to check those items out. Um, any type of support is you know, great. <laughs> um, again, if, if you find this content really helpful or meaningful, sometimes when we um, take that step and, and be vulnerable you know, with, with showing what's inside our hearts and what's really our truth, we realize that we're much more connected um, than, than what we thought we were. And so um, I hope that um, as I'm living this experience, it, and you, that you find some type of truth for yourself or, or find some type of um, ability to heal in some way just by relating, you know, just, just by knowing that you're not alone. That really has been my goal with with this process, um, not just um, being able to connect with others, but really for my own healing. Um, it's definitely been a therapeutic experience and a very creative one for, for myself. So I thank you and um, I wish you all the best and you know, we'll see what else um, comes next for me. So.